Welcome to BevCam's production of Conversations with Candidates. I'm your host, Jenna Coburn, for this segment, and right now we are talking to Anne-Marie mcnulty Chesa, who is currently and running for Ward 5 School Committee. Jenna and BevCam, thank you for having me today. I look forward to having this conversation. Thank you for coming. So why are you running for office, Anne-Marie? Um, I had always sort of thought that 10 years might be the end point of my political career. And yet there were some changes in the last year of both the superintendent and assistant superintendent leaving and Bill Scanlon retiring that it didn't quite feel that it was a good time to have a lot of turnover also on the school committee. There are a lot of initiatives that have come forward over my last 10 years and I wanted to make sure that they would continue to move forward and that we could have that kind of stability. So that's why I said, well, I think I have one more term in me. Okay. And um, what are the other than, in addition to, but you can reference this, but other than that, what are the biggest challenges facing the Beverly School System? I would say for sure the biggest challenge is that we need to fire, hire our next superintendent and they in turn will hire the next assist, assistant superintendent. The superintendent of schools is obviously the CEO of the school district. They have a $50 million budget that they have to control and approximately 500 employees and 4,700 students. All of that is a huge job, and those of us that are on the school committee now take this search very seriously. Currently, the search committee consists of Maria Decker, Bill Scanlon, and Paul Manzo from the school committee, and then there are principals and teachers and community representatives that are also there. They are going to begin their interview process of nine finalists within the next few weeks. From there, that will be whittled down to four finalists. Once it gets to the point that it's four finalists, it comes back to the seven-member school committee. And we, in turn, interview these the candidates. We go visit their communities. They visit our community. We check out their references. And then from that point on, we will make a decision about who the best choice is for Beverly. When we did this a few years ago, because we had done the search a little later in the school year, we had lost some valuable candidates. So the search is happening sooner this year just to make sure that we can maintain all the quality candidates that we feel are good for Beverly. So that is by far the first. I would say secondly, um, the Briscoe Middle School project, we want to make sure that that continues to move forward and there are many steps getting the approval from the Mass Massachusetts Building Committee. It's only a, the first process. We have many, many more steps that we have to follow. So that, I would say, is probably the second. You know, th those are the two biggest. And just to touch on this timeline that you talked about in terms of the election coming up and potential turnover of the school committee. Right. Um, that going from nine candidates to four, where, right. when does all that happen? The four candidates, the four finalists would still be with this current sitting school committee. Okay. It, um, I've heard, I've had heard conversations out in the community that maybe it should, should have been different. Maybe the new mayor should be part of this process. And it's something you can argue either way. You know, Bill Scanley certainly brings, you know, 20 years of experience into picking a superintendent, but he won't be working with the next superintendent. So that certainly does change. But I think this is pro the process that I think probably is best for Beverly to make sure that we have the current people that are sitting making the choice. Okay. Um, so uh, the next question was going to be your thoughts on the recruiting process for the new superintendent, and I think you've touched on that, so we'll skip over that. Um, if reelected, how would what would you do to bring new school committee members um, on board and up to date with the responsibilities of the group? Thinking back to when mm -hmm. you were a new school committee member, I think uh, something that is required now by state law is that you have to go in and take a day training from the Mass Association of School Committees. And it is called charting the course, and it teaches you about all the rules and regulations and ethics that are involved in being a school committee member. Um, once a year, we are required to take an online test to make sure that we know what the eth ethical responsibilities are. We certainly wouldn't want anybody blurring those lines. But something that's also new that we have talked about is having um, a mentoring program for any new members. So in this last term, uh, Matt Cavanaugh was the newest member of our board, and Maria Decker spent time mentoring him through the process. And I'm sure that's something that would obviously continue. I think it's very important because there are some people who come onto the school committee who are very knowledgeable. They've either served on one of our, you know, the finance subcommittee or the curriculum subcommittee. I served on curriculum when you were president. 
and that certainly gave me a lot of knowledge about the school district and how the subcommittees worked and we hate to have somebody that sort of steps in and hasn't really participated in anything but just say there is someone that does that we would mentor them okay great idea and this would be the first year you would do this well, maria did it this Maps. from map but i don't know how formalized it was i wasn't involved so i'm not sure exactly how what the process was and whether it's all written down okay and um so from all your years in office, the past 10, what are some of your more notable accomplishments? Well, I, I think by far I would have to say the high school project. Um, on that day, it was probably one of the happiest days of my life. And my one of my sons sent me a text that day and said, congratulations on the birth of your fourth child. Because it would have been quite a long process from, you know, wishing and hoping to actual design plans to going out and looking at other high schools that we used as a similar model for Beverly High School, to serving on the furniture, fixtures, and equipment, which is every single every single item in this school was purchased, and there was a committee that helped do that. I felt honored to be on that committee. To taking tours, I think I probably took 20 tours as it was being built to the finally the, the day of the ribbon cutting, which as I said was just, it just felt so right for the, the community. You know, our kids deserved that building and it certainly came in on time and on budget. And I just, I will always feel honored to know what my, my name is on that plaque. And so at some point when <laughs> there may not be any chaisels left in Beverly, mm -hmm. my name will still be there or our name will be there. It's great. Anything else you want to mention in terms of accomplishments? I think that we have as a group, we've really been um, good about professional development. Um, almost every member of the school committee has partaken of the Mass Association of School Committee Conference, which is down on Cape Cod. And it starts on a Wednesday and it goes through till Saturday. So we've all taken time off from work and gone down to the Cape and taken anywhere from five to six you know, lectures or you know, there were some really amazing speakers last year. And t we've really listened to what other communities are doing. Some of them are like working breakfast. Some of them are, there's a brown bag lunch and they'll throw out a topic and it'll be like money saving ideas. And you'll be sitting in groups of say five people and you throw out your best money saving ideas and then you throw them all up. So from being something like that, which was very unstructured to some of the more structured activities, they also have, um, I've gone to other school committee meetings in other communities. I um, was working with a group of people, we were called the North Shore Coalition for School Funding. And although we didn't quite get to do what, what our goals were, there were five or six communities of us, of school committee presidents, and we met monthly. And we talked about, once again, about funding ideas and grant writing and you know how do you get parents into your schools and how do you let people in the community know the great things that are happening in your schools. If you rely on the newspapers, all that's happening is bad. You know, other than when you open a you know, beautiful high school. But on the whole, the newspapers aren't there to give you good PR. So it's up to us to give good PR. And we've, some of the things we've done um, under my presidency, we put out a, um, like a little catalog that we gave to the realtors. And it talked about all the great things that were happening in the Beverly Public Schools. So any realtor has that in town. And it talks about from things like our MCAS scores to our outstanding drama department, to the, you know, the high school band, to all the activities at, you know, at Briscoe in the afternoons. I think we've really tried to do a lot of, of outreach to the community and tried to get out what we're doing, so. Great, and I'm sure most people aren't aware of the um, going to the conferences and meeting with the other school committee in town, which, uh, in the state, which is so important. Now, looking back, you know, if you ten years ago when you, your first year on the school, I guess it was nine and a half years to no, eleven. It's, it's coming. It's coming up. up this is the end of my years, tenth year. Yes, but it, your first year on the school committee. Yes, knowing what you know today, what might have you done different from some of the decisions or? Th things from that first year? Um, well, it was a little traumatic first year because the superintendent announced in May that he was leaving in July. So that was kind of eye-opening right. that something like that could happen. Um, I, I will say that at the time I really valued, um, Judith Cronin was the president of the school committee, and I valued the fact that she just kept everything calm and even keeled. And 
I sort of look towards her to, as a mentor of how to react if there's something that you're like kind of taken aback from or something you're, you're surprised at, that don't react quickly. And I think probably my first year, I probably did react more quickly. I, so yeah. I think if I could have brought that sense of calm. Another thing, um, and this might sound something that's little, but I'm sure as you remember, when you were on the school committee, the meetings were all over the month. So it might be the first Tuesday of the month was finance and the third Wednesday of the month was curriculum or whatever it was. Um, as I started my second year, I made a suggestion that we move all of our meetings to Wednesday nights. And needless to say, everybody was happy to do that. While that worked for us, I think it worked for the community because it, it told them when we were going to be. Everybody knows that the city council in Beverly meets on Monday nights. It's just something everybody knows. But for the school committee, nobody knew because right. you had to sort of you know, hunt or look or ask. Or, and I think by doing it and moving everything to, to Wednesday nights, I think it was good for us, but it was also really good for the community. And, and we've ke you've kept that up. And we've kept that up. So I would say those are, you know, I've learned to not overreact and, and sometimes sort of try and think maybe a little bit outside the box. It doesn't have to be that way because that's the way it is now. Change is not necessarily bad, and that's something I've said a lot over 10 years. Change can be really good. <laughs> so how do you balance your um, sometimes roles, opposing roles, as a school committee member, a taxpayer, and a parent? Okay. Um, as a school committee member, I try and make sure that I am as informed as I can about any issue that's come before us. I always do the homework. So tonight we have a finance committee meeting. I am on finance, and I have probably already spent two hours with that packet of information to walk in and make sure I can answer, ask any questions that need to be asked, or if somebody asks me a question about something that's happening in finance, I can do it. So as a school committee member, I think it's really important that I remain um, focused and diligent. As a parent, <laughs> There are times that it is tough as a parent. I made sure that whenever I went in and I met with one of my children's teachers, I would say, hi, I'm here as a mom. I'm not here as a school committee member. And if it, it never came up, but if I had ever thought it was going to be that it might be a, a, a conversation that was uncomfortable for the teacher, then I would, maybe would have the principal come with me. You know, I, I had, one of my children was really struggled in a class. And so my husband and I met with her, and as I said, I started off the conversation by saying, hi, I'm just a mom, and, and what can you tell me? And she, you know, I, you know, I asked her, should he, Joe, should he move down a level or whatever? And she was obviously very comfortable having the conversation with me about what he wasn't doing that was required in that class. I don't think it would necessarily be true for every teacher. So I think you sort of, have, as a parent, you have to be careful about how you talk to staff members. As a taxpayer, um, it's hard. I mean, I know that people look at the school budget and they say, how can you be spending that kind of money? How can it possibly cost, you know, approximately $50 million to educate kids, you know, when it used to be this? And I understand that. I understand that people's budgets are tight. Families' budgets are tight. Um, a couple of things I've done over the last years. I, we, we lowered one of the fees. We lowered the parking fee. But I know in the, just the last month, we've had two trips come before the school committee for approval. And as you know, our students are afforded amazing opportunities from trips to foreign lands to um, something that might be in the arts department to like nature's classroom for sixth graders. And I've actually voted no on some of these trips over the last year, this year and last year, because I just think they're too expensive. And I don't think because a child is at a certain point in time, whether it be an eighth grader or this, it means that there should be some sort of huge event to, to mark that time. I don't understand why it can't be a cookout at Lynch Park or, but to cask our families in this day and age to be spending more money, well, they're already spending so much money, and to be spending more money to go on some sort of a trip, I. So I think that's what I've sort of tried to be mindful of the taxpayers. And for Nature's Classroom, um, Nat Nature's Classroom, which is an annual sixth grade trip, the kids go away, they leave Monday, they come back Friday. It's very science and nature oriented. There's some history. 
it checks off a lot of the boxes of what we want our sixth graders to learn educationally, but it also gives these kids a lot of so new social situations that they've never been. There are kids who've never been away from home before. There are kids who, you know, don't know how about sleeping arrangements. And I think we want every kid who can to go on that trip. To me, that's part of the curriculum. And I said last week, I think we need to find a way as a, as a school district to help pay for it. I, I just think to put another, you know, $500 on a parent's plate and say, okay, here's $500 you now have to pay. So I have actually said, I think for that, I want to, in the budget this year, I want us to look at how can we help fund part of nature's classroom? Because if it's as important as we say it is, then we should be paying for it. How have your how how do you think or do you have examples of when your personal interest or how have you handled this when your personal interest has might conflict with your role as a school committee member? We've talked a little mm -hmm. bit about being a parent, but right. where there's been a conflict, even if it's a conflict more in your mind. But. Right. Um, <laughs> off the top of my head, I really can't think of any. Um, See, I'd like to think that I've always, like, when my child was in the band, my last child was in the band, so if I was really, like, tried to be overly helpful about when we pulled everything out of the school to, to tear it down and put everything back in the new building. Um, I, I haven't had anyone ever talk to me about a conflict. I, I, so I, you've managed, you feel like uh, Yeah, I feel like I've way. managed, I, you oh. know, I, I would like to think that I would be able to step back, and that's what I've always tried to do, is step back. I also have um, an amazing husband. And I can go to him, and I can say, "Well, what do you think about this?" And you know, I, I am I am blessed with a a large circle of friends, some of whom work in this district, and and you know, I, I I'll really I'll I'll ask people. Um, I've put out on Facebook, "What do you think about this?" and try and get responses back, and really tried to use social media to see what I can get back. You know, we um, there was something that was going on last week at at, at Briscoe, and there was all this chatter on Facebook. So I then got in turn, got in touch with the superintendent and said, you know, this is all this conversation about this issue on Facebook and I think that it's something we might need to address. But it wasn't something that personally affected me at all. So I just, it was just, but I think you just gotta make sure you, that you step out of it. If it's something that really does affect your life, um, there are things I haven't voted on because if it was something that was gonna affect one of my children. So I suppose in that way, you know, okay. I've, re I've recused myself from some votes. Do you feel so. that they were, um, just, can you give us an example? Um, no, I can't remember. <laughs> it, it was a while ago. But, but you know, I just I think it's important to remember that if you're there as a school committee member, you're there as a school committee member and you're not a parent. And if you're there as a parent, then you need to step out from being a school committee member. You be very careful that you don't blur those lines. So... Okay, and gosh, social media is something that we didn't, you didn't have to worry about 10 years ago when you started. No, we did not. <laughs> yes, there, be, there are a lot of new rules that we have to be careful yeah. about. One that actually I'm kind of glad to, to speak to is that if you have an issue for which you're hearing from a lot of parents, and that comes up you know, all the time, you know, whether it's security in our buildings, um, the issue with the child being that was hit by a car in front of Hannah School, there are a lot of issues like that. We'll hear from a large group of parents, and what they'll do is send an email, and they'll send it to all seven school committee members, and then we can't respond. And we really try and get that out there. If we respond, it's a violation of the open meeting law. If somebody sends me an individual email, then I can respond. Or if they call me, I can respond. They can call all seven of us, but because we don't, they don't, because they don't know what the other school, what, they don't, those other school committee members don't know what I said. So, it, so we, we have to, so people say something, I'll send any, I'm sorry, due to conflicts in the open meeting law, I can't respond to this email. If you choose to email me individually or call me individually, then I can respond. Okay. That's something people good, that's don't know. Good for, I think a lot of people don't know that. I think they think that we'll just blast this out to the whole list and see who answers. Exactly. And yeah. then they, you know, we worry because they might be thinking you're being rude or disrespectful. Right. And of course, you're not doing that at all. It's just, you know, we've been very careful in my 10 years. We've never had any issues coming down from, from the Ethics Commission about us. Great. You know. So what, you, new homeowners in Beverly with young children, or have they haven't had children yet? And I'm sure you've encountered this a lot. I know I have. And they're at that, um, do I stay? I love my house, I love my neighborhood, but do I stay, do I go, do I choose private school? 
Do I stay in Beverly and go to public schools? Do I stay in Beverly and go to private school? Um, or do I move to one of the towns down the road? And so <laughs> what, I'm sure you've, been, you've encountered those situations. What's your advice, Ben? I'm rabid about, <laughs> about the Beverly Public Schools. Um, there's no reason to ever look outside of Beverly. All five of our elementary schools um, are meeting the Common Core, which are new federal mandates, and we're doing that so well. We have such dedicated, hardworking teachers, and they work, each school though, each has its own individual flavor. They each have their own, it's a take, a little take, a little different by, from each school. And I go to many, many PTO meetings, and you can get a sense of community from each one. Each one, each elementary school is going to meet your child's needs, whether your child is, you know, really ahead of the curve or struggling a bit. They know how to do it. Teachers know how to individualize their instruction to meet children at all different levels. Because when you get a classroom of 20, 22 kids, they're not all the same level. They, they're coming in and they all have different experiences. And somebody might have come in with having a hard day. And, and then all of a sudden you're sitting there and you're going, oh, it's obviously that you know, Sally's having a hard day today. Let me try and twist what I'm going to do and teach it to her a different way. So then you get to middle school. And I know that's the school that people always say, oh, well, you know, it's Briscoe. Yes, it's a really old building. I, I give you that. It's an old building. But it, it isn't the building that's teaching the kids. It's the teachers that are teaching the kids. And the teachers have risen to the occasion. There is technology in that building that we wouldn't have realized 10 years ago we could get in that building. But we put enough into the infrastructure that there is an amazing amount of technology. There are act after school activities like there never were when your and my children, yeah. when our kids, when they went to middle school, there was hardly anything in the afternoon. I think there was track a math team. So <laughs> that's what my boys did, math team. Um, and now there's a recycling club and there's a newspaper and there's, there's so many great things happening at Briscoe. You shouldn't shy away from it. And then the high school. Well, you know, the high school is our, our shining star, but it isn't just because of the new building, because as I said, it isn't the building that teaches. But it is, once again, the quality of staff, the individualized instructions, activities for every single type of child, whether your child, you know, when my son was at Beverly High School, he, my youngest child was not much of a joiner, and he said, I think I'm going to start a video game club. I'm like, woohoo. So he started a video game club. I don't know whether it still exists, but I know there's a philosophy club, and there's just, it's on and on and on. But in addition to that, let's look at the academics. You know, Bev Beverly has, I think at this point, 14 AP classes. Their community just over to our, going to our west, I think that they have four. We have five languages. Community, once again, they have one foreign language. You know, we have a community that people are school choicing their kids to this other community, and the only foreign language class they offer is Spanish. It's like, I feel that's very limiting. If you have a really bright child, Beverly High School is a wonderful place for your kid. And if you have a child who might be a struggling learner, Beverly's a great place for your kid. There's no reason to ever look outside of Beverly because they're going to be able to meet your needs no matter what. Well, thank you. I feel the same way. <laughs> um, okay. So um, you were t so some of the bad news that, um, you know, how did you feel like when you, you know, and I, I'll tell you how I felt, you know, I'm, you're watching the news and you knew about this, I'm sure, but all of a sudden it's on the regular, you know, ABC about a sexting scandal in the Beverly schools. I mean, that, and that's the headline. Of course, mm -hmm. they didn't really explain it very well. But how did you feel as a school committee member at that moment of hearing that? Um, I wish we hadn't heard about it on the news. I would have preferred to have heard about it from our oh, administration. Oh, so you did hear about it on the news. I heard about it on the news. So it's, um, you know, the acting superintendent was out of town, so, I, you know, and we knew he was going to be out of town, so I think it was just something that, that fell through the cracks. I, I'm not excusing it, but, I, you know, I think that the children should have been, there should be some sort of assembly to talk to the children. You know, I think, I think that that's something that maybe could have been handled better. You know, but once again, you, it's not a perfect world. You know, you, know, the, you, you just never, and once again, the news is never looking for good news. They're news looking for right. bad news. And, you know, we, you know, we had an incident in the high school with a lockdown a few years ago, and the kids were locked down for like three hours, and there were helicopters, and, it, and yet the same thing happened at Hamilton Wenham High School two weeks later. Nothing. It was on page 12. So, it, 
you just got to be careful. You got to be careful. You can't necessarily believe it just because it's on the news or you can't necessarily believe it the way it is because you've heard it just that way from your kid. So, okay. Um, if you're not elected, mm -hmm. I know this is probably, well, I don't know how much thought you, if you're not elected, how, what would you, how will you stay involved or will you stay involved? Oh, I definitely will stay involved. Um, I had already said I, I would like to join the board of directors for the Beverly Ed Education Foundation. Um, they were a little upset because I had told them last January that I was going to join their board of directors <laughs> and I had to sort of rescind that offer. But yes, I certainly, you know, there, there's a chance I could lose. I, I, um, I would be disappointed, but I certainly, and if people feel that they would prefer another candidate, I, you know, I understand that. I'm not going to, um, I will never stop being involved in the Beverly Public Schools. I started um, more than 25 years ago. And when my oldest child started at Washington Beetle and my first foray into um, being involved as I um, was a, with a fluoride rinse program. And you went into yep. classrooms and the kids did fluoride rinse. And that was my first, that was my first activity. And that was uh, like 25 years ago. And I went from that to PTOs, to psych councils, to health advisory. I mean, the list of, of what I have done in the Beverly Public Schools is quite long. I couldn't just give it up. I will still be here. Well, that's good to know. Okay, so we're about, um, I want to ask you a parting question, um, you know, to the viewers. Now, this is to the viewers. Why, why should they vote for you? I think people should vote for me because I bring experience to the table. I am a teacher, and I am at work as a literacy tutor in Swampscott, Massachusetts. I have been a teacher for over 20 years, and I've taught preschool up through grades 5, special ed, as well as regular ed. I have made it obvious I am passionate about the Beverly Public Schools, and we're never going to move backwards. We're only going to move forward, and even if I'm pushing it as hard <laughs> as I can. I believe, I believe that we can do what's best for the kids. I have. I was adding up um, last winter about how many meetings I've been to. I think it's over a thousand. I've gone to over a thousand meetings in ten years. That's about a hundred meetings a year, um, from PTO meetings to, as I said, health advisory. I was on the strategic plan. I am part of the consolidation committee. We have revived that, and as we, everybody people know, we consolidated buildings and grounds. And this committee is meeting again, and I have three other areas that I've brought forward to this group that I think we should consider merging with the city. Um, some of them, I think, could be you know, good money savers. And I think any time you can save money, that's what we need to do. And I think that I think I've just proven to the people in Ward 5 that I will fight for you, and I will fight for your kids. I love kids, and I've always loved kids. And I think that the fact that I care for them um, and, you know, I do have an opponent, and, you know, I'm sure that the person is very well-intentioned, but I will say that since he pulled his nomination papers back in, in April, he has not attended one school committee meeting, not one. And there have been dozens of meetings. And to me, if you, if you want to come and be part of the school committee, then you really need to come and do the work and be part of the group. So, Well, thank you. We're just about out of time. Thank you, Anne Marie Chesa, and um, who is running? As if you didn't hear the beginning, she is running for Ward Five. Is the incumbent and is running again for Ward Five School Committee. My name is Jenna Coburn, and on behalf of BevCam, thank you for joining us.